Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and we're going to talk about the Unify Protect Viewport, PoE, or as we call it, Magic Video Tube for the Unify Protect. We'll get into that in a minute. But first, if you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel, including a link to our Patreon if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter. We also have a swag store where you can get shirts and other items that are for sale, and that changes from time to time what's available and what's not, so go ahead and check that out frequently. And finally, our forums. If you'd like to have a more in-depth discussion about this video, suggestions for new videos, or just reach out, say hi, and talk tech, our forums are a great place for that. All right, now back to the content. So Unify sent this out for, to us for review uh, maybe a little over a week ago, and right away we started plugging in and using it. And it's uh, if a couple of my videos that have been done since I used it. You may have noticed in the back we have the camera showing uh, behind me because, well, our kitchen's on the other side of this camera, and we liked using it to watch it work and see who's coming in the front door if we're all here eating. Anyways, uh, in that week, we've had no problems with it at all. It actually works quite well. Uh, when we first set it up, adopted it, plugged it in, and it uh, did reboot once, which is because it auto-updates without asking, which is actually good. Because if the target is to send this to uh, people who just want to use the system, like the Unify Protect is kind of a basic system, it does have a place in the market, I think, for people who want a very automated system that is, you know, auto-updates the cameras, auto-updates the software, auto-updates the accessories, such as this, that come on there and that's what it seems to do. Now, a couple little background pieces. We do like the Unify Protect system for small cameras. That's what we're using this on, uh, is our Unify Protect with a handful of cameras. And uh, it is a Cloud Key Gen 2 with an SSD. So we've been using that and doing some long-term testing, and I'm going to work on a separate review for Unify Protect. But we found it actually be very reliable, very solid, and uh, intuitive to use. Back to this, this is a piece that I would have said prior to knowing about this uh, product coming out, um, that this was a big missing component, because a lot of people want to have some type of persistent display like a TV and have the views set to go on here. Now, this is uh, being done after Chris from Crosstalk did his video. So this is May of 2020. I'll leave a link to Chris's video as well. And I'm still seeing the same things that Chris seen. One, let's get these problems out of the way. They're not really a game stopper here, but at least there's something I want to make sure people aware of. One, I don't see any way to control this on the app on my phone. Two, the issue is if you have a full screen view or even a windowed view and you want to set it to either rotate based on time or motion, that works perfectly fine on the computer in Protect, but does not go over to this device. Uh, those are something that are probably easily fixed with an update, but I will admit I've experienced exactly the same things as Chris. I confirmed that he, you know, I messaged Chris and I uh, said, hey, you know, I've seen that in your video. You're having the same problems and I'm having these. I just want to make sure it hasn't been anything you figured out beyond that. And so far as of right now, it just seems to be a minor issue. Minor issue, um, easily fixed with software. Now let's look at the device itself. In the box, of course, you get this, you get the little uh, holder to mount it onto the wall or to a TV. You get a couple screws. Now, the by the way, um, because there's an end, the way the ends are, it doesn't matter. It can go in either way, whichever is more convenient to have the HDMI at the top or the bottom or the secondary network port, which by the way, it's uh, right here's the HDMI and there's a secondary network port. And on this end, we have the uh, standard PoE in. It's only PoE. There's no plug or anything. You're going to have to either use an injector or a PoE switch. And it's hard to see right here, but I can show how it works. There's a little blinking light that you can't see when it's off, but it uh, it's blinking white is booting, which takes about 35 seconds to boot. Uh, solid blue means it's adopted and working, and white solid means ready to be adopted. Uh, the adoption process is really easy in there. Then we got a couple screws in here. We got a couple VESA mount screws if you wanted to mount it to uh, like the back of a TV in one of the VESA slots. So that's kind of nice that they included that on there. Um, and these have the recessed. So when you're doing that, things still fit in there without getting caught. So I'm glad they included those screws. And two, almost what feels like oversized wall anchors. <laughs> they, they really in, gave you some heavy duty wall anchors on there. There's also a little sticky back, uh, so you can sticky back this. I'm probably, I'm guessing, so you can sticky back it to a TV uh, so it's not plastic on plastic. I, I, I don't know, it didn't feel that sticky. I was a little bit less clear on that particular application of it. And uh, it kind of looks like a little pack of gum, which was the card, which has a link on there and a QR code you can scan, which will take you to uh, this link right here. So it just shows the package contents and the same things I showed. Oh, there's a reset button on there and an HDMI cable was included and it just shows you how to mount it. 
And then there's that optional sticky mount um, for sticking it to the back of a TV. With the surface mount. I don't know. Maybe it will hold. I didn't really test it. It's uh, It feels sticky enough. Like I said, it's not a part I tested. Anyways, back to the review here. So what we're going to do now is going to plug it in and show you how it looks like. Uh, I'm going to use the TV behind me. So that's actually where we usually have this plugged in. Plug in the provided HDMI cable that they um, gave me here and uh, plug in the PoE and boot it up. So you can see the fancy Unify logo and then the kind of cool screen it has in the back there. Like I said, the boot up time is probably right around oh, I don't know, 35, 40 seconds. It's relatively fast, which is nice. Um, so if you have to, you know, restart it or anything like that, and when it did the update, that was relatively fast as well. Now, as far as uses, well, this is kind of simple. First, you find it, you adopt it, put it on the same network as your Unify Cloud Key. Then uh, we called it Magic Video 2, but it's, you know, obviously USB, UFP viewport. And right here under the about of it is, uh, all the options. So if we switch to all cameras, you can see it very quickly switching behind me. Matter of fact, we'll show that again. I'll click on one and say, from the time you click, there's just like, I don't know, like three second delay maybe before it switches views. You hear the click of the mouse and you can see it changes really quick. So pretty simple there. Now, how do you set these views? Really easy. So you go over here to your live view and we have this view. We have the one I titled YouTube demo where I grab a handful of cameras. Um, any view you create and edit here and protect shows up as available under the about of the device. Really simple. Now, the problem I mentioned before was a magic video tube rotating. So this is a rotating one. So we'll just edit the view and show you. If you drag multiple cameras to a view, you can choose either a motion or time. And I have it set to time. So every five seconds, it should save the, um, it'll change this view. So if we wait five seconds, you'll watch it go to another section. And now we switched out there, but let's go back over here and magic video tube. And we'll choose the rotating one. And you can see behind me, it's showing the front counter. And we switch over here to watching the live view and we'll switch to the same one over here. So rotating. So we're on the front counter here, front counter in the back. And this one switches. That one just stays in the front counter. It keeps playing. It keeps loading. It doesn't stop. Now we're uh, seeing an outback view. And it, I'm not sure why it doesn't do that. That's the, that is the kind of mystery. Other than that, the multi-camera views and things like that work fine. So if we were to go to uh, like this view here with a four camera view, and even if you try to rotate one of these in a four camera view, or like this YouTube demo view here where we have, a, uh, we don't have but a handful of cameras on the protect that we've been testing with. Um, we'll go back over here to the devices. It does the multi views perfectly fine. It just doesn't rotate any of them. So really minor in terms of uh, that. So go ahead and switch it there. Actually, which one was it? Oh, YouTube demo, choose that one. And you can see the multi-camera view behind me. So it'll split it all up. So really, this is just a dead simple device, kind of magical, but that's in a way what you want for clients. You want to have a device that you can plug in, let it go, adopt it, it updates. You don't have to really manage it. Now, this is one of the places we think the Unify Protect system is really good at. If you have just a handful of cameras, and as I mentioned, we have a Cloud Key Gen 2, and we have, I think, four cameras on it it seems to hold up quite well. One of those cameras is one of the 4K, and that's why we put an SSD in there. I've commented before when I did my review that if you want reasonably fast video playback and retrieval, uh, having an SSD makes a pretty big difference, it seems like, in the cloud key in terms of that. Uh, we haven't tested it again lately. Uh, when I finished my final review of the, or longer term review of the cloud key plus uh, running protect on there. I, I mean, maybe I'll try another hard drive again, but it seems to be working with the SSD pretty well. Overall, I do like the protect system. I think this is a welcome addition to it. I know people, uh, you know, they always want to have something displayed on there. And there are other camera systems that offer like, you know, add-on boxes, like commercial type NVR systems that have add-on systems to do this. And they're generally kind of expensive. This has an MSRP of 199. Would I like to see the price point lower? Yeah. I. I I don't know if they can do that. It is a 4K device. It does do up to 4K output. I've only tested at 1080, um, but it's spec to do 4K at 30 frames a second. So maybe they can get the price point lower, but I'll admit compared to some of the other NVR options out there that have like an external device, this is still, um, you know, within reasonable price because this is about half the price of some of the other ones I've seen. The last thing I'm going to comment on, you know, my overall feelings on the Unify Protect system is 
please don't, I did say for smaller camera systems. I mean, at some point the system does choke a little with a lot of cameras on there. So uh, my endorsement here is of the device and of this as a kit for maybe a business that says I'm, I need five cameras or four cameras. I don't need 50 and I don't plan to expand to 50 cameras. It seems like a good fit. So it's a welcome addition to the kit and it's way easier than trying to roll your own idea. And I, I, I'm aware of all the projects of doing things like having a Raspberry Pi to monitor it, but that always comes with a lot more challenges. Um, and to me for 199 versus even spending only half the price of something else, but then you have to help manage it. If you're a hobbyist, great. But if it's something you want to put in a client who says, hey, I got four cameras, I need four cameras displayed on this TV and uh, this person's office, then that's going to be a turnkey, easy solution with this. And I think that works. We have a few pizza places and a few other small places using the Protect and they like it. It just works, you know, and they aren't going to get a bigger building. So it fits their need. And therefore, this is like easy, intuitive to use. And by the way, the app for Protect is still pretty nice. So my thoughts on it, I give it a thumbs up. I think it's a nice product. And thank you, Unify, for sending us one for review. Uh, we're actually going to keep reviewing it right here <laughs> like we are and use it because it's actually really convenient. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.